Power 1490 started off as actually Joy 1490. The station used to be called Joy 1490, which I thought was kind of a cheesy name. Southern Arizona's new hot, hot mix. KJYK Tucson. Joy 1490. Tucson's all hit music. Joy 1490. 646 with Doug Thomas and the number one requested song at this radio station. Here's Sinead O'Connor on Joy 1490. It's concentration. Tucson's new power mix. Joy 1490. Well, Joy 1490's entire job was to come in and just try to steal one or two listeners. Well, we started to see a little bit of success. And Bruce picked the name Power, and the slogan was either Power 1490 Dance Now or Power 1490 Jams. The genesis for 1490 and, and Power 1490 was the general manager, Dick Stein, after I had been uh, fired uh, at KRQ. He asked to have lunch with me, and he told me of a grand scheme he had to help his AC station uh, at the time called Cloud. And uh, he felt that KRQ was too big for its britches, was allowed to be too broad, and did I think that we could force them to pick a side of the fence. KRQ during the day would play Bette Midler and very light rock, mellow music. Uh, and at night they'd try to get, you know, a little more edgy, a little more hip, but that way they were trying to play best of both worlds. 93.7 KRQ, Tucson's only hit music station, Cher, Peter Sotera, After All. KRQ, Tina Turner, Private Dancer. That's the title track from her latest album. We gotta play this for you. Brand new from Taylor Dane, I'll Be Your Shelter. 93.7 KRQ, Tucson's only hit music station. And Bruce came to me and, came to me and said, uh, uh, I wanna run a, I wanna put a, a hip hop uh, rhythmic, rhythmic station on the air. My program director over both the radio stations was named uh, Alan. Didn't really want to do it. It wasn't the type of music he liked. Uh, and I said, we, we have to do it, and because uh, I, I think it's got some potential to it. Not so much for the revenue, but when you're in a small town, in a college town, uh, you know, you're going to do pretty well if you get the kids listening to it. Um, we, had the, we knew that we get all the basketball players and the football players and all the kids, the athletes, to come on the air and do that sort of thing. Um, so Bruce came on the air and I gave him almost total responsibility. Really, he just kind of gave me the keys to the radio station and said, uh, go after him. I have very low expectations, but if you can get him to focus on you, we can beat him with the AC station. So we were a spoiler to the very core. And at the time, we were owned by a company called Duchess Swa Communications. Um, based out of Chicago, uh, the president of the radio division was a man named Roland Johnson. And I, and I think I called him up and I said, you know, we got this AM radio station, it's not going anywhere. Uh, you know, I'd like to move to this direction. And he asked the normal questions, you know, what's it going to cost? Can we make any money? Uh, what's the upside? What's the downside? And I had a good rationale and he goes, okay, do it, have fun. We were in a little tiny control room, didn't have much equipment, and uh, we were playing carts, which looked like eight tracks. Initially, it was just Bruce with a vision to beat KRQ and myself, you know, playing his music. I mean, it really, it hadn't turned into anything big yet. They didn't invest a lot of money into it. Um, the studio equipment was kind of ratty. We used rotary knobs instead of, you know, the up and down sliders. And the microphones were the cast-offs from the radio station next door. All right, 880 1490 is the number. Keep the calls coming in. We're, are we having some problems with the phone lines? That shouldn't surprise me. Something going wrong around here? In this plush state of the art facility? That's shocking. That's shocking. That's you know, shocking. people have a, have a warped view of what radio's like, don't they? You probably did until you walked into this. Yeah, place. I thought it was all digital and high tech and uh, <laughs> computerized. And, uh, I got a better stereo at home. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't have a budget and we didn't have, you know, um, all the experienced DJs um, that, you know, maybe a 100,000 watt station is. And we only had a 1,000 watts, you know, a 1,000 watt stick somewhere, but we treated it as real as we possibly could. Bruce was very skilled. He picked the right people. I remember he did the, I think he did the evening drive, if I recall correctly, either that or morning. I really can't remember, but he was one of the first people to go live, live there. And then they borrowed Lisa McDaniel from Cloud, made her do middays. And then they had someone else doing the night drive. And they had Johnny Mac doing the late night drive, like after like eight. Uh, Bruce brought in, you know, a bunch of professional DJs, ideas, and he never treated it like a throwaway station. All of a sudden we were getting uh, the basketball team coming in to play, uh, to be uh, DJs on the air. A guy named Sean Elliott, who ended up being uh, 
has a, a, an NBA ring, uh, Steve Kerr, and all these kids would come in and, and talk on the air with, with, with some of our jocks. Arizona's Joseph Blair is certainly a force on the basketball court, but he's also got a career on the airwaves. As Joe Pirate shows us, JB is a DJ at Power 1490. I think everybody would think it's fun to talk on the radio, so, you know, this is another chance I get to talk on the radio and just have a lot of fun at the same time. Monday through Thursday nights from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m., Arizona basketball player Joseph Blair teams up with Gary the Sandman on radio station 1490. And uh, we had about maybe 40 songs, and Bruce would type out a playlist on an actual typewriter, pre-computer, and we would just play the uh, songs over. And I had just come from uh, working a bunch of FM stations, and I thought it was a little primitive approach to radio, but it was Bruce's first PD gig, so. Uh, you know, I didn't want to rock the boat, man, but we didn't get calls or nothing like that. You know, I would just play the music and talk and the phone wouldn't ring and it was like, what is all this? <laughs>